Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about the bond which forms the protein. Now we know that the amino acids are the monomers to form the protein. Now how are these amino acids joined together? By the peptide bond. So, the learning objectives will be to describe the formation of peptide bond by the help of amino acids and to explain the properties of the peptide chain which is formed using the peptide bond. So first, amino acids, how do they form proteins? So, amino acids are the building blocks for the proteins. These amino acids, there are, we know that the biologically important 20 amino acids are present which form the proteins. So, these 20 amino acids undergo different types of combinations joined together and form the protein ultimately. So, the bond between these amino acids is called peptide bond and this structure, I explained that a bead on a string structure is a protein. It is like a bead on a string. So, here, but it is not protein as yet. Why? Because it has not undergone the folding. See, after this peptide, this is the bond which is known as peptide bond, which joins together the amino acids. So, these peptides undergo different types of foldings and coilings and a protein is formed. Let us now have a look at how the peptide bond is formed. So, peptide bond formation. So, Hoffmister and Emil Fischer, these were the scientists who first proposed that the amino acids are joined together by the peptide bond. Now, the peptide bond formation is a building reaction. Again, just the same as the carbohydrates. We learned that the glycosidic bond is formed by removal of water molecule. So, it was a dehydration synthesis. Similarly, peptide bond formation is a dehydration synthesis condensation reaction. Have a look. This is one amino acid, amino acid number one. This is second amino acid, amino acid number two. As you can see, this is a carboxyl group COOH. This is a NH2 group, NH2. So, OH group from the carboxyl end and hydrogen from the amino group. They condense together, a water molecule is released and a peptide bond is formed. So, what is the nature of the peptide bond? CONH. So, CONH bond, CONH bond is the peptide bond. The nature of peptide bond is CONH. It is formed between OH group of the carboxyl group of one amino acid and hydrogen of the amino group of the another amino acid condensed together and form a peptide bond. Now what are peptides? So by the formation of peptide, uh, peptide bond, peptides are formed. Now if only two amino acids are involved in formation of a peptide bond, then that, uh, that uh, entity which is formed is known as a peptide. It is a dipeptide since only two amino acids are present. Next, if large peptide is formed, large peptide as in greater than 50 amino acids are present, then it is known as polypeptide, polypeptide. So now we are in a situation to define protein. So protein is a single polypeptide or many polypeptides which undergo three-dimensional folding and coiling to form a structure which is biologically functional. So, a protein is a biological functional entity formed by folding and coiling of the polypeptides formed by condensation of amino acids. Now, each polypeptide chain will have an amino terminal which is an N-terminus and a carboxyl terminal, which is a C terminus. Why they are called N or C terminus? Because the N terminus has a free amino group and the C terminus has a free carboxyl group. Also, when you write the name of the peptide, whenever we are writing the name of the peptide, we start from left, that is the N terminus, that is the amino terminus, and we move towards the right to the carboxyl. So this is the first amino acid, this is supposedly the last amino acid. See here, one peptide bond, two peptide bond and three peptide bond. So three peptide bonds and how many amino acids? Four amino acids. We start from the left and move towards the right. 
Now, what is a polypeptide chain? We know that the polypeptide chain is made up of greater than 50 amino acids joined together. On the basis of the polypeptide chain, that is the number of the polypeptide chain, a protein can be of two types, a monomeric protein and a multimeric protein. What is a monomeric protein? Mono, as the name suggests, it consists of single polypeptide chain. So there is only one polypeptide chain, it folds and undergoes coiling, goes on interactions and it forms a functional protein. For example, the myoglobin, which is present in the muscles and the lysozyme which is present in the tears and saliva. Similarly, multimeric protein. Now, in multimeric protein, many polypeptides join together, undergo folding and coiling and interactions and become functional. So, they have many polypeptide chains. And the examples of multimeric proteins are very common example found in RBC hemoglobin which consists of four polypeptide chains and also a sugar hormone insulin which controls sugar. It consists of around two polypeptide chains which are joined together to form a functional insulin. Thus, to summarize, we can say that the amino acids join together to form a peptide by peptide bond. The peptide bond is a CONH bond formed by OH group from carboxyl end and H group from amino end. When two amino acids are joined, then the entity is known as dipeptide. If greater than 50 amino acids are present, then the entity is known as polypeptide. Now, each polypeptide has two ends, amino terminus and carboxyl terminus. And on the basis of polypeptide chain, the proteins can be monomeric, that is single, and multimeric, that is more than two polypeptide chains. So, this is all about the peptide bond. In the next video, we will learn about how slowly and slowly the peptide is becoming a functional protein by changes in the structure. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.